we need to ask the question, what is pantayong pananaw? Uh, it's not it's not as so simple just as what I've said earlier uh, for us by us. Okay? Pantayang pananaw um, is defining a position against the dominant colonial, neo-colonial tradition of scholarship. And, you know, this was a, a way of thinking, a way of framing that Salazar was advocating. Okay? It will, at the same time, um, this distinguished itself from the left-wing nationalism, which is as found in student organizations, trade unions, and peasant organizations, and peasant groups. Now, um, Bantayong Pananaw is controversial, not, the, not in as much as what it was saying, or not because it was believing in for us, by us, but actually because of Susalasas and controversial involvement involvement in the Tadhana history project of Marcos, whom as some of you know, was the present president who had declared martial law and was in power from 1972 or even before that, right, in the 1960s when he was first elected um, president until 1986, okay? Now, what is Pantayong Pananaw? It is the development of a loose um, community of scholars committed to developing social scientific languages in Filipino. Uh, it undertakes, it is from Gramsci, a war of position or struggle for hegemony in the propagation of the national language. So, um, simply put, right, Pantatayong Pananaw, it's all about using Filipino um, in scholarship. So that's what it is. But what it wanted to do as well was it wanted to set itself apart from the, the work that was also being done by the what it considered to be the, the, the leftist organizations of students, workers, peasants, and so on and so forth. Okay, so they were studying um, um, La Par and Hernandez, okay? So La Par and Hernandez analyzed and translated two important sources of Philippine history. What were these, okay? So, this is a controversial 18th century letter of an Augustinian priest to a friend in Spain about the Filipino personality. And second, an eyewitness account of the outbreak of the 1896 revolution by a caretaker of a Dominican-owned plantation in Cavite. So here are the questions, okay? So what transpires in the Filipinization of the account? In, watch, in which way is translation significant? To indigenization of knowledge. How is indigenization illustrated in translation? And fourth, what uses do notes and annotations have in translation? So this is um, the Parin Hernandez from Reyes and Guillermo. Okay, so according to them, translation converges with a campaign to promote document discourse and criticism in history writing. So translation turns into a tool. Why? So you can use this tool now, translation, for clarifying symbols and significations to an intended audience. Third, interspersed with notes and annotations, which comprise fragments of side narratives and meanings that continually intervene in the translation. And fourth, the disturbances now become the strength of the translation. Okay, so annotations convey actually untranslatability. <laughs> Meaning what? What cannot be translated? Relaying the refusal of the translator to smoothly integrate so-called foreign ideas into his language or her language of preference. Meaning what? Meaning it's okay. If, if some parts cannot be, uns cannot be translated, it's okay. Some foreign ideas cannot really be what? Smoothly integrated. Readers are informed not only of the intentions of the authors of the original text, but also the goals of the translator. So what happens is the translator actually interacts with the original text. It's not just the translator just translates like a robot, okay, like or like a machine, right? So therefore, this is from Walter Benjamin, okay? It is the royal robe of ample folds of the Filipino language that envelops the original content. 
Okay.